Welcome to our talk, Azure Hyperscale Seismic Imaging, a cloud-native approach for 3D FWI, presented by Che, George, Swera, Harry, Van Weir from uh, Microsoft, and Navjot, Gerard from uh, Imperial College London. As cloud computing becomes more and more popular lately, we explore its potential for hyperscale seismic imaging workloads. The lift and shift approach of a traditional MPI-based solution faces various challenges. We instead introduce a cloud-native solution based on Docker, Kubernetes, and Dusk that offer easy deployment and great scalability. We will also demonstrate a large-scale 3D FWI on Azure based on this cloud-native solution where we use the full 3D overthrust velocity model, whose size is 20 by 20 by 5 cubic kilometers. Our FWI Python code is based on DeVito. We will also show it runs on both Azure CPUs and GPUs, and various architectures too. Here's the link of the DeVito package from my Imperial College if you like to learn more. Last, our solution is uh, repeatable and easy to use. As a platform company, we don't have an intention to keep this work proprietary. Instead, we are interested in sharing and collaborating with the users and the customers to advance the technology and help them to achieve more. We'll start with our cloud native solution and talk about Docker, Kubernetes, and Dusk. Imagine when you acquire a virtual machine or VM on cloud, you'll need to set up the environment for running your app. Docker is uh, used to package and run an app in an isolated environment called container. On top of the Linux operating system, the Docker engine supports a number of uh, containers. In each container, the Docker image would provide the environment, in our case, that's the DeVito dependencies, such as uh, NumPy, SimPy, SciPy, and the DeVito package itself for running FWI. Each container can be a parallel worker deriving the FWI gradient for a particular shot. Now we have a Docker containers, the next step is to run them at scale. There are multiple choices, and we pick a Kubernetes. It orchestrates a cluster using hundreds or thousands of VMs and manage Docker containers at scale, such as pulling the Docker image from the registry and load it in containers. Kubernetes, or AKS, offers order scanning and order detection and replacement of a failed container or worker which is uh, typically not available in the traditional MPI-based approach. A survey from a Stack Overflow shows that Linux, Docker, and Kubernetes are the most loved and wanted platforms. They are currently widely used and trending in software engineering and other disciplines. Their concept is quite different from code development in on-prem HPC clusters. I have experienced both. Some cloud-native technologies are mature and offer advantages over the traditional MPI approach in certain areas. I would encourage you to take a look in this interesting cloud space. So far, we have a Docker and Kubernetes for running an app at scale. We still need a scheduler to talk to the Kubernetes cluster. Dusk is one of the tools that serve the purpose of communicating between the local VM and the Kubernetes cluster. Dusk is a scheduler for parallel computing written in Python. It submits FWI gradient jobs to the Kubernetes cluster and then collects and sums the return gradients of all shots. In this example, the Dusk dashboard shows a five FWI iterations. Each green line corresponds to the progress of a worker or a shot. The gap indicates the pause of all workers, and the summed gradient is sent back to the local VM for LBFGS optimization. 
The dots show the dynamic reduction of FWI gradients we implemented. It's a great feature you can develop with the dots and it's important for running FWI on cloud efficiently. Let me explain. Assume we have uh, six workers and each uh, green bar represents uh, its time for completing the FWI gradient calculation. In our case, we ask DOSC to sum whenever two results are available. At the time of the dashed line, A and B are available, summation is uh, performed. Please note, it does so in the worker space, not by returning both to the local VM. It also smartly determines the minimum data movement. In this example, say it keeps a gradient B in place and only moves a gradient A in order to keep the traffic at the lowest level. Let's assume the summation takes a decent amount of time to finish. Then at the next dashing line, we sum a B and C as they are both available. Next, while B and C summation is not done yet, D and E are available, so D and E are summed. And the next, B and D are summed, and so on. Remember, during dynamic reduction, workers will be either released for the next job or stopped so they are not idling. Let's now switch to geophysics and to show that our cloud native solution scales to large scale problems. We will run 3D FWI on the full 3D overthrust velocity model. The model size is 20 by 20 by 5 cubic kilometers. To keep our short number in the same order of that in a field survey, we generated 32 by 32 or around 1,000 shots using the true velocity model. Each shot has above 100,000 traces of a 6-second recording. The generated 1,000 shots are stored in Azure Blob Storage. We use HDF5 format for short data as there are some advantages. HDF5 offers a convenient key-value pair format so for each shot, we can store start time, time interval, source and receiver locations, and record data. This represents what we need for real data processing. HDF5 also allows you to easily incorporate a third-party compression algorithm. We compress both receiver locations and record data with a compression ratio of roughly 16 to 1 in this case. The original storage size of uh, 1,000 shots is one and a quarter terabytes, but now it's uh, reduced to 80 gigabytes after compression, dramatically reducing the data I/O traffic. However, in principle, users uh, can use other data formats such as uh, SegWay. We want to make sure our lossy compression does not impact our FWI result. Let's first check short data compression in a hard display. The original looks the same to the recovered, which is first compressed and then decompressed. You also see that the compression loss is minimal. Let's also plot the same data in a display that's 10 times hotter. Again, we don't see coherent signals in compression loss. So we are happy with our lossy compression, which does not remove important information. Let's also check the FWI result without and with short data compression. The inverted velocity results are almost the same, and the objective functions are indistinguishable. Now, let's run the hyperscale 3D at Tropic FWI on Azure using checkpointing. We use uh, 256 uh, VMs of uh, E16 V4. Each VM has uh, 16 virtual CPUs 
and 128 gigabytes of uh, memory. That's around 4,000 cores in total. The initial velocity model and the true velocity model are displayed. For the inversion, we show both the inline and the cross line of the 3D model. We run FWI 22 iterations using the LBFGS optimization without regularization. We we'll show all intermediate velocity results in a movie, the iteration number and corresponding normalized objective function are displayed on top. Initial velocity 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 iterations. The objective function here is the same as the data residual since we are not using any regularization during our inversion. Now, after 22 iterations, you will see the FWR result is uh, close to the true velocity model on the right. Now let's uh, QC the objective uh, function and the model error of our FWR. You will see they both uh, decrease as a function of uh, iteration number. Let's also cross plot the objective function versus the model error. You will see this curve indicates an uh, effective uh, convergence. Our FWR code runs on various uh, CPU and GPU architectures on Azure. We list some examples of uh, Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. The good news is that you only need to maintain one set of the FWR Python code. You don't have to program in CUDA for running on GPUs. This uh, FWR Python code runs on both uh, CPUs and GPUs. Here's a toy 3D FWR example. The result is from a running on NVIDIA V100 GPUs. Displayed are initial velocity FWR result and the true velocity. Both inline and cross line plots. We also run the experiment on one GPU, two GPUs, four, eight, and sixteen GPUs. According to the runtime, the scanning performance seems very good. We also provide a recorded session showing this 3D FWR running in GitLab using Azure GPUs. The NVIDIA dashboard allows a user to monitor GPU utilization and GPU memory usage in real time. The task dashboard also displays the progress of four workers. You will see the bars are moving. To conclude, we have uh, demonstrated a cloud-native uh, solution for hyperscale seismic imaging. We are able to run 20 by 20 km 3D FWR on Azure. The seismic imaging Python code runs on both Azure CPUs and GPUs. This is an ongoing project. Our current experiment is uh, limited by the time and the budget. Next step is to scale to more than 100,000 cores. We acknowledge Microsoft Azure Global, the Vito team, and SEG Open Data. Again, we would like to share and collaborate with our customers. Please reach out if you are interested. Thank you.